Hey guys, it's your boy Black Rue back with another top stock video. Um, catch me every Monday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time on the Benzinga channel where we go over stock and we go over crypto. This week we will go over some more top uh, NFT play to earn games and we will go over like my top 10 um, crypto stocks. Since uh, Bitcoin has now gone back over 40K, I think it'd be a good idea for us to look at that. We'll look at it a little bit today, but um, we'll go over it more in depth on the um, show. And before we get into it, a little branding. DarkHorseWatcher.com. That is DarkHorseWatcher.com. If you want to check out the channel and like and subscribe, all you have to do is go to DarkHorseWatcher.com and you will be redirected directly to the channel. Big thanks to my uh, longtime friend Scott for that. If you guys are looking for um, snazzy graphical design like that for your company or you're looking for talking to a expert who's all about um, having people... Um, succeed in uh, Google and YouTube. Talk to Scott. Check out his uh, website at nerdface.com. That's nerdface.com. Let me grab some water here, guys. Little Dutch Brothers. Love me some Dutch Brothers. But yeah, let's get into it here. So, um, number one on my list is Clean Spark. Love, 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 love Cream Spark. Um, they're a diverse company in that they do microgrids and they do Bitcoin mining. And if you're not familiar with microgrids, microgrids are say like um, they what you use if you're um, if you can't get to the main grid with your house. Say you're rich enough to have a house in the middle of nowhere, uh, California. You can't get to the main grid, so you'll bring in somebody who give you some microgrids. And they'll hook up those micro grids to some batteries and some solar power, and you can, um, you know, you can power your house. So, um, yeah, so really big on uh, Clean Spark. As you can see, like last time they beat their earnings, they beat them so much. Look at this 8.12 mil. Last earnings before that, they, they literally kind of tripled them. Right, and um, I'm expecting to have good earnings this year too, or this quarter coming up too. And you can see here, also if we look at this, two directors are uh, two directors actually bought some shares. I took a look at these. You guys probably can't see it on your screen now, but I can see it and. What it is, is director brought uh, shares in March and July. He brought them in uh, March for $26.76. Uh, $26 uh, he bought them in July for $19.54. That has to let you know this is a steal sitting at uh, $13.95 or, uh, you know, even $13.5. Because if the director bought at $26 and $19, you're getting even more of a bargain. And let me just show you why the director bought at that point. Clean Spark was as high as $40. So they were getting it half off at $26 kind of here. And at $19, you know, it's, it's, it's literally half off. So um, a lot of pricing games being played with uh, Clean Spark because... Clean Spark is in a couple ETFs, and um, they kind of tie it to the price of Bitcoin, even though they do microgrids and tons of other stuff as well. Um, like I said, with these earnings, once they start getting into the to the hundred millions of, of earnings in a, in a quarter, which I'm sure they'll get to uh, with them mining Bitcoin, this might be the first quarter here where they're in the tens of millions of revenue. But really high on these guys' earnings in 12 days. And if we go look again at their chart, 
this is the lowest they've been in a long time. Like, 1350 is pretty much, like, the biggest support they've had in a very long time. So, this is a good, really good price to buy it. See what happens on Monday. If they dip any further than uh, 1305 they may come down here to $10. So, that'll be something to watch. But, um, if you see them go up to, like, uh, $14, that might be a good point to just confirm that little uh, dip there. I have a saying where it's scout the dip and buy the bounce. So you want to scout out the dip and make sure it's finished. And when it's finished, you buy that complete bounce. So as you can see here, it dipped down to 1330 something can pretty much assume that this dip is done because it bounced back up to 13.95 even after hours it still held that 13.5 mark so i say anywhere in between 13 and 13 like 75 if you want to buy that if it looks like it's on the uptrend it's great but um our mark here it's pretty much like thirteen dollars. If it dips below that, it might it might fall a ten. But either way, I think this is a good, really, really good deal. Really high on Clean Spark for the future. We have Riot Blockchain. Riot Blockchain. They're one of the biggest miners of Bitcoin. We come over here and look at it. They blew earnings out of the water themselves. Went from 5.91 million all the way to 23 million in one quarter for revenue. And all, all they do is mine Bitcoin. So, probably looking for them to have another big, big uh, quarter. So, all I've been doing is mining this, this big old Bitcoin. Um, they were as high as $80 at one point. I know. Cause I had I had some shares, I let them go at around like seventy five. But um, right here it was as low as twenty six, thirty three is not a bad spot to get in. If you can get in at thirty three, but even here you can see it ran after hours. I'm saying anywhere between thirty three and thirty five is probably a good deal. And um, here we have Overstock. Overstock, they recently had earnings where they went up to around like $80, only to fall down here to 70 I think that's just a pattern with Overstock. Every time they have great earnings, and then it just dumps out. It, it, it's just a pattern with them. Um, let's see here. If we go look at the earnings... Last earnings were the 29th of July and uh, 29th of May. So if we look at the chart, go out last six months. Where's May 29th? Brown right here. So it looks like they didn't dump out. Well... Yeah, <laughs> they did dump out. Every time they have really good earnings, they dump out a few days later. So, so at this point, I think it's safe to say, especially since they're tied to Bitcoin, um, anywhere you can hop in right here, they're due to probably hop back up. So, um, really good point to buy these guys at seventy. Um, because as you can see, there's, there's kind of a trend here. They drop and then they create lower lows and higher highs. Um, so at 70, it's a really good deal. In fact, I might look to put in a little option on this guy, um, for a little further out at maybe like the 80 strike. Cause, um, yeah, that, that looks, that looks really juicy right there, to be honest with you. Okay. Here we have MUDS. MUDS is a SPAC that's going to merge to be tops. 
Tops is going to be like an NFT play because Tops, if, if we go over here, they have a whole bunch of NFTs that they've been selling. They got the, the MLB baseball NFTs. <laughs> they have, um, who else do they have? Let me see. So tops, if we go to the tops area, I believe they have Street Fighter as well. Okay, so tops, they got... Okay, so see, they got all the baseball cards. They got Garbage Pail Kids. They have a pretty big stable, actually, in their roster of NFTs. So, um, so if you're looking to get an NFT play, Tops might be a really good way to go. They got Garbage Pail Kids, like I said. G DTZ, I think this is Godzilla. Yeah, they got Godzilla. So Tops is Tops is a really good NFT play. And you got the garbage kill pill kids. So really high on that. Um I'm not as high on Tops as I am like NBA Top Shot. I think Tops should like figure out a way to innovate these these cards, because um, NBA Top Shot, that's what they did. They figured out a way to innovate it in that their moments, and they do all of these different... Um, let's just get off on that tangent just a little bit. I like the way the NBA Top Shot markets. They, instead of making just regular baseball cards, or re regular basketball cards, what they did is they made these moments in which, they call them moments, but basically, uh, we do we need to sign in? Basically, they're like uh, like little clips of videos. All right, I'm not. I, I, I want to see if I can get, do this without signing in, because I don't want to sign in. Okay, so if we look at these moments. And they're smart with the way that they market. First of all, they got the NBA behind them. Every player makes money on it. Probably the same thing for Tops. Every player makes money on every sale, by the way. Every player makes money on a sale. Because the um, NBA's Player Association and the NBA League is in on this. So the players and the owners make money every time these cards are sold. All right? And then we have, like, let's look at this Zach Levine card right quick. Look at that. That's sweet. Like you got a sweet dunk like that, right? You got the steal. You got, like, so, so, that, like, that's innovating. They've innovated the, the basketball card here and made it into this moment. Not only that, they do Twitch. Twitch, um, Twitch pack openings all the time, and they have Quavo up here, and they have like they tied in Quavo to like a pack collection or a, a, a pack sale, and that's smart. You you get they're getting people who are have a brand. Quavo and me Migos have a brand. They're known to kids. They're known to modern people. And they're having they're marketing with them. Such smart marketers here. With NBA Top Shot, Tops needs to do something like this. They need to get some marketers. They need to they need to get like some uh, influencers like Quavo, like you know, like um maybe like um what is it? These YouTuber TikTok um, influencers. Here's the thing. I'm high on Tops. But I think they need to get some marketing in, like, NBA Top Shot. The things that NBA Top Shot does as far as marketing goes is cutting edge. Uh, the things that Tops is doing as far as marketing goes is, like, 
back in the day when you had flat 2D baseball cards. They're they're not, in my opinion, they're not marketing these to their full potential. That that's that's all I say about that. So here we go. Uh, same thing with Hall of Fame Resort. Um, I'm high on them because they have the NFL. Um, they have the NFL IP to use as um, NFTs, but they decided to do the NFTs in this really complicated way. They really. It's not as easy as just going and buying a NBA Top Shot pack. They try to do it in a way that um, Chili's does the football cards, the, and I mean uh, soccer, so European football. Um, if we go on so rare here, I can show you kind of what. Hall of Fame has in, in store with their cards. So, you buy one of these cards of, you know, one of these guys, and um, you can trade them, and then you play them in a fantasy football game, and you build and manage your squad. I it seems really, and you earn weekly prizes, stuff like that. It seems really sweet. And that, okay, you have this game and all of this stuff. But to me, I think that's a lot more complicated. Uh, seeing you got rare, super rare, unique. It's a lot more complicated than just buying a basketball card pack. NBA Top Shot is eventually going to go into um, having like some sort of way you can play these as well. But I like the simplicity of this card pack. It might seem like a um, it might seem like a contradiction, and like I'm what I'm saying uh, to to innovate, but it's not in that. Okay, they've they've um, they revolutionized the basketball card, and at the same time, it's simple in that you can go and you can buy these cards. Now, I, I can't wait to see with how they're going to play these, get how they're going to do their games, because I think they're going to do the game in a way that um, maybe a lot of you don't have kids, but um, my kids have this like Madden game that they play on their uh, phones, and you kind of level up the players. You get the players and you level them up. So I think they're going to follow that model as opposed to this complicated, like, let's trade and, and make a team model that um, Chili's has for, um, and Chili's is a um, cryptocurrency. Chili's has for these uh, sports, for these uh, soccer players. That's what Hall of Fame Sports is trying to do with um, their NFL players, I think it's way too complicated. Whoever, the company that convinced them to do this, I think it was just a bad idea. But still, at $2.96, still high on these guys. And um, let's do a couple more, and the rest we'll kind of quickly go over on the Ruel Report which you guys can check me out Monday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time on the Benzinga YouTube channel. So my highest two of the ones I have left are Mogo. And um, Mogo is basically a fintech um, company on a phone app. They basically like are the first company that, that can trade um, Bitcoin via an app in Canada. And they have their earnings coming up on um, August 11th. I expect them to beat these earnings. I'll probably get in too because this is the lowest they've been in a, quite a while. So they're at $5.69. Um, very awesome that they're at this low. 
um, a perfect time for us to get in and play a bounce. Because as you can see, we got a pattern here in which it goes to a support and it bounces back up to form a higher high. And lately it's been going to a low to bounce back up to, to go a little bit lower. But at any rate, we're at a low. So um, really good time to get in there. And then we have a SPAC FTCV, which is going to be eToro once it merges. Pretty close to the SPAC limit here at $10. Very, very, very uh, good time to buy this guy. So just to recap, we went over CleanSpark, Riot, MUDS, Hall of Fame Sports, um, Overstock, Mogo, and T FTCV, which is going to be uh, eToro. Catch you guys on Monday on the Ruel Report. Thanks for watching, guys. Peace.